Well, I am getting ready to pick these beans so I can soak them overnight. And it shouldn't take too long to cook them tomorrow. I have two birthdays this month. Well, one was on the 25th of October. One of my boys turned 32. And then I had another one on the 9th of this month that turned 29. So I am going to make their favorite meal tomorrow, which is called Haystacks. And we're going to use these black beans. It won't be a birthday party, just making them a little special little dinner that they love. Since they are such good boys. Even if they were bad boys, I'd do the same. Because they are good boys. Let, I'm going to wash these and let them soak in some warm water. And then later on tonight, I'll get up and put them in the refrigerator. Because I've got my wood heater going anyway, so... That means I will be getting up to make sure that it's warm overnight because the temperature here is getting ready to dip into the teens. And I hate getting up in a cold house. Plus I have my two GG babies here tonight and they don't like it cold either. So that means Gamma gotta keep it warm for the babies. These beans seem to be in pretty good shape. I haven't had to really take with one piece out yet. Well, that's two. Okay, I'm going to turn this off a minute so I can move it over to the sink and wash these beans. Alrighty then, I am ready to wash these beans. Really good. I'm going to drain them. That should be good. And this water will get poured off also when I start to get ready to cook them in the morning. But I'm going to let them sit for a few hours right on the sink here, on the counter, I should say. There we have it, a pot full of beans. My boys are going to be happy. Okay, I'm back. I'm getting ready to rinse my beans off. They've been soaking for quite a few hours now. And get them ready to put on the stove. The 
and already getting a little bit soft, so that's good. Shouldn't take a whole bunch of cooking time. The black beans is not on Dr. Savior's list, but my boys love these and I'm preparing this meal for them, so I'm giving them what they like today. I used to make this meal for them at least a couple of times a month when they were young, so they love this when I prepare it. I don't prepare it often, but they love it when I do. All right, I am back. I am ready to put them on the stove and get them started. Okay, I'll put the top on. And there we go. I will be back later. Okay, I'm going to be soaking these walnuts overnight so they'll be nice and soft in the morning for my walnut meat. So I'll be soaking two cups. Put my water on here. Cover it. Now it's ready for the refrigerator. Okay, I am now ready to start making my tortilla chips. So, I've got a half a teaspoon of um, onion powder, garlic powder, and a tiny bit of baking soda in here. And in this one, I have cayenne pepper and smoked paprika. Sit that together. my first time using the strainer for sifting but it works quite well but it's kind of lumpy but it's going through Now I'm going to put some nutritional yeast in here. I'm going to put a little bit over a half a cup.
need to get a spoon one moment okay I'm back I need to put a little bit of lime juice in here It calls for a teaspoon of lime juice, so that might be a little bit more, but it's all good. And I'm just going to guesstimate at the salt, sea salt. So that should be enough of that. I need just a tablespoon of grapeseed oil. And I'm going to begin to add the water just a little bit at a time. And this is one that you don't want to be too wet. Okay, now it's time for me to get my hands in here. Of course, this has to be rolled out, so. Yeah, that's just about enough. See, that's a nice ball there. Bonzo flour for it to roll around in. Feels like I might have just put a tad bit too much water. Okay, that takes care of that problem. And this is going to get rolled out between two pieces of parchment paper and also it'll get baked on parchment paper. For this recipe you don't put flour down to roll it in so I better move some of this stuff out of the way. Okay, put this up. Grapeseed oil back up. Okay, 
clean my countertop off. Actually, this is just my second time trying this recipe, so it was good the first time, but it's been a while. I'll get my portrait paper off. And I'm going to break this in half and just do half for now. This has to be quite thin. thinner. Good workout for my arms and hands. Check it now and see what it looks like. Once again, I'm 
Okay. I am going to get a knife. I'm going to trim these ends off so it kind of looks a little bit nicer. Put that around here. Like I say, I've only done this once, so they're not going to be perfect, but they will be edible. Much better than buying the stuff in the store, because it is deadly with all the different bad cooking oils that they use. That steel might be a little bit thick, but I'm going to try it anyway. They're going to cook right on this piece of parchment paper right here. Just kind of get them separated a little bit before I put them in the oven. I love trying new things. It's exciting. And this is like new because I in a long time and I use a different recipe when I made other ones before I have my oven set at 350 and I'm going to put these on the baking sheet and um, let them cook for about 10 minutes and then I'll check them to see how they're coming. Put these in and then I'll come back and work on the other one. Set my little egg timer. Ten minutes. gonna put a tad of water on here this feels like it might be a little bit just a little bit too stiff one thing about using garbanzo bean flour I noticed that it 
tightens up quickly. Start cutting these. Stick to the paper, but that's okay. Well, I'm just going to leave that one right there because it wants to stick. So. Okay, I'm going to put these in the oven. Well, actually, I think I'm going to let this one sit until I take the other one out because I don't want to get confused with the time. Get these over here. I'm 
while I clean up my mess. Put this up. The first batch got about four more minutes. Before it goes off. I will be right back okay I'm back I'm going to check on the others and see how they're doing bottom rack. It could take about 15 to 17 minutes for them to complete, but I don't want them to burn, so I'll check them. Once it's 10 minutes past, then I'll check them. I'll set it for 5 minutes, and I'll go ahead and put my other batch in, and hopefully the first batch will be done within that five minute time. It's time for me to pull these off. Oh, they're probably going to have to go back in for a bit, I'm sure. Oh, they're getting there. Turn them around. And I'm going to go ahead and put this second batch in. set this for five minutes for the first batch. And see how long it takes them. In the meantime, I'll be cleaning up my mess over here.
All right, I'm going to check these once more. You're getting there. And they have about three more minutes and they should be ready. Check on my first batch. I mean my second batch. I think I rotate these. Put that on the second and put the, the first batch back on the top. It's hot. Let me get a container to put those in. All right, that first batch should be ready now. I'm going to go ahead and take them out. Perfect timing. Yep. Whew, they are hot. Yep. They are ready. Now I'll put, oh, I'm ready to put them on the second. I'll set the timer for them. I'm gonna give them another four minutes. Well, I'll just give them five minutes. Check these out. Mm. Mm. They taste really good. And they're nice and crunchy. Just got enough salt. Not like the stuff you get in the store that's overwhelming with salt.
And they've got a little bit of heat to them too. From the cayenne pepper. Next time I'm going to have to make some garbanzo bean crackers. They really came out really nice the last time I made some. I think I was eating some of them every day. Well, it wasn't think, I did. But I felt like they were healthy enough that I could eat like that. Let me check these again. Quite ready to be flipped. This one is. That one is a little bit thick, that's why it's stuck because it's a little wet, wetter than it should be. But every time I make them, I'll just get better, so no worries. They're not going to win a beauty contest today, but they sure will soothe my taste buds. Yeah, they're a little bit peppery with the cayenne pepper, but not overwhelming. I, I like hot food, and this is not the way I need to go drink some water to cool it down. Just about two more minutes. And they should be ready. I keep nibbling on the little pieces. Mmm. Now they're really crunchy. See that? Well, this makes an excellent snack for the kids. Also, probably maybe shouldn't use as much cayenne pepper for them. But they like those hot Takis they buy in the store, so they might like these too. Yeah, these need, need about another five minutes, I would say. Back on the bottom row. Bottom rack, I should say. Five more minutes. I'm going to go over here and put up my utensils while I'm waiting.
That way, when I get ready to eat my salad and have some of those, I won't have to worry about these dishes. Because once I eat, I get lazy. And all I want to do then is chill. I love these little bowls that I got from Amazon for my measuring. And I also bought this lemon lime juice squeezer. It works pretty well also. The little bitty limes do well though. I use my electric juicer when I have a lot of little bitty limes to do because you get more juice out of it if you just use the juicer, the electric one, and you get all the juice out. These don't do quite as well. Not They do well with lemons and bigger limes, but not the key limes. Okay, we have look like two more minutes and they should be ready. I got some eggs in here for my salad. Alrighty. I will check them one more time. They should be about ready now. Oh yeah. So I can turn the oven off.
and I'm just going to let them sit on the top rack for just a few minutes. A couple of them still feel a little bit, little tiny bit soft. But I will get back later with the rest of the things that I'm going to be making. So I will see you later. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm ready to get started with making some melty cheese. It's actually called cashew pimento cheese. So I've already added five cups of water in, in my container. I'm doubling this recipe. So if you don't want to make this much, um, you can just cut this recipe in half to fit your needs. But what I like to do is make enough at one time to freeze for next time. And it freezes very well. It thaws out good. You can just blend it up a little bit and it's right back to its usual consistency. So I already have my five cups of water in here. Now I am going to add... Well, I, what it calls, this recipe calls for oat flour, but since I've cut out grains, I'm going to use garbanzo flour. Now, I've never used this one before, so we'll see what happens, but I think it'll come out just fine. So I, I have here a half a cup of garbanzo bean flour that I ground up myself, and I have one cup of roasted red peppers. I didn't roast them. I bought them in the jar. And I have this recipe calls for when you double it, four teaspoons of salt, but I'm using three because four sounded like too much. So that's that. And I also have two teaspoons. Let's make sure here. Yeah, two teaspoons of onion powder. I had to write everything down so I wouldn't forget it. I have a half a cup of nutritional yeast. And this is my onion powder. That's two teaspoons of onion powder. And this is arrowroot powder. It's a thickener. So I have four tablespoons of that. Like I say, this is a double recipe. So And I have two teaspoons of smoked paprika and a half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper in here. These are just extra items that I'm adding. You don't have to use the paprika and you don't have to use the cayenne pepper or the garlic. But I have garlic left over, garlic powder, so I'm trying to use it up. And I have... Um, Four tablespoons of lime juice. This recipe calls for lemon, but I like to use the lime juice. And here I have my one cup of soaked overnight cashews. Okay, now we're going to make some noise. I just want to say before I really start making all this noise that this is a powerful Vitamix and it gets hot enough by turning so fast that it will actually cook this. But if you're using a pot on the stove, you need to blend your stuff and then take half of the water, leave it for later 
for your boiling because you're going to need that to stir up your mixture. But I'll just get to dump everything in here. And if you have one of these machines or anything that works really great, just dump everything in and be done with it. And here we go with some noise. <laughs>
Okay, let's check it out and see. Yeah, you can see how it's smoking. That means it is hot. Mm. Perfect. Now it will finish thickening up in these jars, so I'm going to pour it up. And for the ones that I'm going to put in the freezer, I'm not going to fill it all the way up because these jars will break if they get too full. But as you can see, this double batch makes quite a bit. And I love this. You can use it on salads, tacos, beans. Today we're going to be using, using it on haystacks. And you'll get to see how I put that together at the end of this video. Fill, uh, fill this one all the way up. So I will have two jars that will not go in the freezer. But these, once they cool off, I don't want to cap them now because they need to cool off. But once they cool off, then I will put the caps on and store them in the freezer once they get really, really cool. These two jars right here will just go in the refrigerator because I'm sure we'll use these up quickly. And there you have it. That's how I make my cashew pimento cheese. One moment, please. Okay, now while that is cooling off, I'm going to go over here and clean my mess up right quick. I'll be right back. Alrighty, I got that all cleaned up. This is so good. I got to taste it one more time. Mm. Very good. And once it tightens up, I'll be back to show you how it looks. 
I'm back. Now I'm going to wash my, well, pour the water off of my rice and get it going. It's been soaking for about 20 hours, so it should be ready to cook. It will not take so long. That is actually one cup of rice, and you can see that the kernels have broken open. You can see the little white. And this gets three cups of water. To one cup of rice. Now I have it on the stove, turn it on. And it's supposed to be ready in about 40 or 45 minutes, but I'm gonna set it on 40 and then I'll check it. I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of salt in here. And one moment. Okay, now I'm going to begin cutting up my peppers and onions and my shallots for my Spanish rice. Wash these already and got them ready to go. These are nice, fresh, and firm. This is my first time really making Spanish rice out of black rice, so I'm excited to see how it's going to turn out. I think it'll be good. We shall see. While I'm cutting, I'm just going to cut enough of these so that I can also use them in my 
one of me. It's pretty cold here in Wisconsin. It's supposed to drop down to in the teens tonight. So this will be a nice meal to have on a cold day. Shallots ready. These little small ones are a little bit harder to peel than the bigger ones, but I'm getting there. I have four here, so I might as well use them all up before they start looking funny and getting soft. They're still firm. And I've had them for a couple of weeks now, so I need to use them up. One moment, please. 